Hey guys, Lady Borgia, and welcome. Happy Halloween! Yes, we are doing the Weeping Bride, the Widow Bride, the Black Veil Bride today. She's been in a bit of a carriage accident, a little bit of bruising going on there. She's um, got plenty of rings though. And I know we don't always do gore on this channel, but you know, like I said it's beauty, fantasy, and special effects. Um, we have not forgotten our lashes. Hey, she is a bride, and we are also glam too. We don't forget our lashes or our rings. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get going. I have included everything in the description box, just like I did in the previous one, with links below for everything you need for this, from the makeup to the veil. Yes, and actually, this is not expensive, but quite a few women wore this in their weddings. So, you know, if you're looking for a black veil, there you go. The earrings might not be, but if you need them, I will find them for you. All right, let's go. Give your girl a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ding, hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Okay, let's go. Hello, are you ready to have some fun? All right, grab an old shirt so you don't mess anything up. Wash your face and then get ready because we're going to have some fun. All right, get some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Clean out the area that you want to put the prosthetic. Yeah, I know. It stinks like hell. And then use your glue stick to start blocking your brows. It's going to take four or five different um, applications and you want them to thoroughly dry in between. So start doing that while you're doing other things. Get the scar wax and the Vaseline out and get the Vaseline on your spatula and get out a nice little chunk of scar wax. Mmm. And start working it with your fingers and rolling it into the shape and size that you want it for the prosthetic on your face. Check your cheekbone. That looks good. And then roll the second part. <laughs> I was watching horror movies. Yeah, definitely check both pieces. This is going to be the big wound side and you want to make sure that they fit. And then take the prosade and a q-tip and just spread it out evenly where you're going to need it you don't want to put it too far over and wait for it to get a little bit tacky just like eyelash glue and then put your scar wax on where you want it this i did right on and then start using your spatula covered in vaseline to smooth it out because you want it seamless against your skin you don't want to be able to see where the scar wax prosthetic starts and your skin and ends and where your skin begins so take your time work with it keep adding more vaseline um yeah definitely cut that wound open with the other side i love that special and then i like to use my fingers dipped in vaseline to really smooth it out and make it nice looking and then that is just um, a disposable eyeliner brush. I have a ton of them, never use them for eyeliner, but it's good for poking holes and cleaning things. I'll link them below. And then we're gonna do the other side, which is higher up on the cheekbone. Same thing, put on the prosade, measure it out with your, you know, visually. Put it on after it's tacky and then start working it with your Vaseline covered your spatula and fingers. Your fingers and your face end up really, really soft. And um, just work it out so you don't have a seam because that kind of ruins the <laughs> effect if you can tell where it starts and stops. Then grab your late liquid latex. Ooh. I like to work with clear. Um, I put it in a little cup and that was way too much. And then use a sponge or a brush that you're willing to throw out. I do buy cheap ones and do that sometimes. And a Q-tip and start sealing that scar wax in. This isn't a must, but this is something I prefer to do. And then use that Q-tip to get it into the, all the little nooks and crannies. And then while you're waiting for it to be fully dry and cured, take those triangle um, sponges for makeup, rip them into pieces, and then start picking parts out to make them rough for your bruises later. You're going to want a couple of them. And then take your jump rings for the rings in your face. They're not as big as I wanted them, but that's the right gauge, and that's what I could get really fast. See, got them off of Amazon. I'm going to do another one where they're bigger and then what I imagined in my head, but and um, pop them open then go back to those brows that are fully dry now with five layers of glue 
<laughs> Put some concealer on. Yeah, that is a look. Blend it in. Yeah, sexy, sexy. <laughs> and get your good old um, powder and put that on, that air spun. Fantastic for stuff like that. <laughs> mm, creepy. And then get some cream, um, white makeup. I like the Marin white stick, but anything else will do. And start buffing it on your face. You don't want a solid look, just a kind of mildly pale, somewhat undead look. I also put it directly onto the brush, like right there, um, to put it onto the prosthetic and get it into the little nooks and crannies so you don't disturb the scar wax prosthetic because if you push too hard, it is still soft under there and uh, you don't want to mess it up. And now that the latex is mostly dry, you want to start picking little holes in it for little skin fissures and <laughs> whatnot skin peeling back gross things yeah that is the look and then get into character remember she's searching there she crashed on the way to her wedding guys she's searching for her groom then take your bruise wheel or other red cream makeup and start filling it in to those little wound holes and then i took a little bit of the blue mixed with the red and started shading underneath it and then i took the cinematic flash palette from makeup forever and took that blue and that red and started shading under the big wound on the other cheekbone Alex dimension and then the red on my other on the bright flash palette and start filling in where that big gaping wound is and a little darker red for dimension and <laughs> pop it in those little wound holes that we created with the disposable eyeliner brush and then take a, that to powder and set it and forget it like I said last time you could use baby powder if you needed to and She's sad. You need to be sad. But then laughing and happy too. And then take those sponges that you ripped up and roughed up before while you were waiting for your latex and your brows and start with the dark blue in the center and then the red. You might want, and then the darker red. You might want to look at bruises, for example. They also come in different shapes and sizes and intensities depending on the shape of what caused the bruise. And then you're going to use the yellow and the green because that's a bit of an older bruise. That's what it starts to turn. And then we're going to repeat that on the other side with the most intense part of the bruise, the darkest. And then we're going to put a little bit older blood underneath it because the bruise is just a bunch of broken blood vessels underneath the skin. Yeah, very pretty. Hey, my science background comes in for this, so it's handy dandy, all that anatomy and stuff. Ooh, yeah, nasty. And then go into that blue and go under the eyes because you're going to want some baggage and deathliness this time. You want under eye circles. Yeah, don't forget to do your hands. And then get that 35B out. Y'all know you have it. And white out those lids, set them, and then mix in some white and black to make gray and start hollowing out those eye sockets and really intensify it on the inner upper corner. Be where the eye and the nose meet. And then around the sides of the face and other places under the chin where you might want some shadow. I also mixed in a little bit of the navy blue with that. Oh, that's a rough morning. Ooh. <laughs> and then we're going to get the um, dip brow, ABH dip brow, and we're going to make some brows. We draw them out and they're a little pointed and worried in the middle, kind of like, you know, those 11s that people try to get rid of. And then take the brown and a bit of black from the artistic bright flash palette and fill them in because she's got a kind of permanent worried look. Yeah, there we go. And the Smashbox full exposure palette, which I don't know why you don't see that more and take that brown and set it and forget it. 
I don't know why. Rompo Peel, why did you ever put that in my head? And then put on part of your costume and get back to that bruise wheel and start working some bruises onto your hands and knuckles because remember, she was banged around pretty bad. I actually had a different top for this, but we had a malfunction. And ooh, yeah, some of those ow, bruises, I actually felt in my jaw like it hurt. It was fooling my mind. And anyway, wardrobe malfunction, and so I had to put that shirt on and it worked. And then take that silvery bluish gray and put that in your crease, because it works. And then that cream shimmer color, and it just didn't work out right, so I went to my Kevin Aquant Electra Pop palette, and that was great for the lid. And then put it in your inner corner and then a little bit under the eye because it gives a shiny appearance, um, kind of like tears, without drawing tears on. But it gives that kind of wet appearance. And then go in with some mascara because we still do glam here and she's still gonna get her lashes. Ooh, Ooh. Halloween H2O. Yeah, that's a good part, Halloween H2O, girl. And get those on. And dang, that bruise on my hand. And then some coconut aligner for Morphe. Coconut. I think they're like three bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna take those jump rings. Uh, sh these are sharp, adults only, adult supervision. Be very careful when you put them through that it doesn't actually get down to your skin. I suggest putting the spatula underneath it because if you pull too hard, you can separate the prosthetic, the scar wax from your face and then cause a line um, where it starts to split and that will ruin mm -hmm. all your hard work. So adjust them mm -hmm. with the spatula and also keep that spatula underneath to get some support as you push them through. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna go in on the just cheekbone side and I decided, what the hell? Let's put some Ooh. rings there too. Why not? It's a wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, all people sing and Ooh. dance while they do this, but it's mm. fun. Okay, and Ben Nye, fresh scat blood. You could use other kinds of blood too, God knows I have plenty, um, but I just found this good to add it in the wound, in the holes. Um, we're gonna put some coming in out of her nose on the different parts where you scratched off the latex because she's not really actively heavily bleeding, but she was bleeding and also some blood tears. Although it's up to you because when you do it, this is your work of art. Um, you could add more and then, oh yeah, make sure you get those hands done and ready. Yeah, here she is. Okay, guys, here I am. We are done. Oh my, that's quite the carriage accident she got into, isn't it? We have our weeping bride, our widow, our whatnot, whatever you would like to call her and enjoy being her for Halloween. This is actually very comfortable. I'm moving my face around a lot. I've actually had this on for quite a while. So I will include everything in the description box for you to be her down to her accessories although i don't know about the earrings but i'll find something okay happy halloween i love you all and um we've got time for quite a few more so as many as i can do and edit it will get to you all right and hey vote for low you want more dark you want more gore you want happier what do you want tell me below all right love you all baby boy god that is something huh <laughs> Happy Halloween.